have to where is that coming from manufacturing other countries that don't have anything to do with oil are driving their foreign exchange earning all from manufacturing so you have to look at the agreements look at those things we're not doing well here put them in place and sign that agreement because it's going to be a win-win for us it's just that the manufacturer said let's look at this let's know what is there for us there's no way you can be part of packaging or something and it gets to the stage of signing you walk out of it so when we, what were you doing when you're part of package putting it together it doesn't make sense thank you very much candidate of the apc I, frankly i thought uh, my colleague of the pdp would say whether to sign or not to sign you know but let me just say very quickly that there is a process of consultation which is going on with the private sector. That process is very important because one of the chief fears of, an, of, of, of the continental free trade zone, one of the chief fears of it is the possibility of transshipment. Third countries will transship. So for example, a China can ship its goods to Benin Republic and import to Nigeria under a free trade agreement. So we can have a situation where local industry is killed just by mere fact, just by the mere fact that we sign on to this without ensuring that all of the loopholes have been blocked. So we're in the process of ensuring that those loopholes are blocked. The Manufacturers Association of Nigeria, MAN, rejected the, uh, the, the Continental Free Trade Zone here, and we're talking to them. Similarly, in Asima, several of the, uh, of the business bodies, even uh, Industrial and Competitiveness Council, have expressed serious reservations, and we must consult. We are a private, we are a private sector-driven economy. We cannot just say because we were involved in the process. Every African country was involved in the process. But it's our duty as a responsible government to ensure that we take into account all of the different issues that are involved before we sign. Even, even, even trade remedies, even a regime of trade remedies, we have not put in place, the, the, the AFCTA has not put in place a sufficient regime of trade remedies. All of these issues have to be taken into account. There's no hurry to rush into, 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 into signing that agreement. There's no hurry whatsoever. We must make sure that we cover all our bases, all the bases before we sign. That really is the issue. Thank you very much. Yeah. Candidate of the ANN. So if if we are going to, we have to look at all the surrounding circumstances of the agreement before signing. We are, we are, we have the policy to be driven by private sector, like you said. But we, in our own way, we are looking at it in a different way. Because once you sign an agreement, you are already completely bounded by it. We have to look at how much that agreement will affect the common man in the street. What will, how much employment will that agreement bring? How would it upgrade the development of our industries, which we're looking at diversifying? How would it also affect the GDP that we're looking to expand? So in, those, in that agreement, we'll sit down and, and ensure that there is provision for, agree, for, for employment, where issues of employment, because a lot of times we see that the Chinese government are coming in, and they are coming in with all their people, to most of their people to come and work, without taking cognizance that we have a lot of people who are unemployed, unemployed in Nigeria. So what we will do as, as, as a party uh, uh, in our government is to ensure that everybody is taken care of. Because we also want to collaborate with other parties, other countries. We want to encourage free trade soon. We'll also look at how much that um, agreement will affect our local industries. If it's going to help us, if it's going to be like an exchange, it's, it's important for us to look at it carefully before signing. And it has to be in alliance, it, in, it, it has to be in tandem with what our general policies stand for in our, in our, in our government. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Candidate of the SCPN. Well, I thank God that the sitting government has not signed the agreement because the agreement will not be in the interest of this country. And I say so because presently, so much is not going on in our, in, our, in our economy, especially in our industries. And any program or policy that will sign, that will turn Nigeria into dumping ground for goods from other countries, 
and cripple the local industries would not be in the, in, the interest, in the interest of us. It is a good thing that as brothers that will trade with each other. But are we going to get equal advantage from them? Now, most of our industries that are to, most of the industries that are formerly based in this country are relocated to Benin, Togo, and some other neighboring countries. So what will it benefit Nigeria with the highest population and a very big market in Africa? I think the proper thing is for Nigerian government to put the signing of the agreement on hold until the economy of this country improves and our manufacturer industries are thriving. Thank you very much. Candidate of YPP. Thank you very much. <clears throat> As where Nigeria is standing today, I don't think it's a wise decision to go sign in such kind of agreement. We have advantage of population. If at all, Nigeria today will try to inject some funds, let's even start with the state level, where each and every state in Nigeria, let's not even talk about of the, uh, uh, let's not even talk about of the natural resources. You can see that each and every state in Nigeria have something, one thing or the other, that they are producing that's different from what we used to have all over the world. If at all, we will inject some amount or some investment into such kind of um, uh, businesses or such kind of check, uh, uh, creativity into each and every state, definitely we will get what we want, but that's when the country will be very, very strong in production. That's when such kind of policies will favor Nigeria. But not at this stage we are where Nigeria doesn't produce much and our export um, activity is very, very low. Thank you very much. Yes, candidate of the PDP. Thank you very much. Like I said before, our government will be demand-driven, not supply-driven. That means you need to consult the people. We at the stage of planning, not at the stage of signing, you, you say, oh, well, we need to go and consult the people. We will do it before we get to that stage. Two, you don't need to fear about China's transshipment. That shows inefficiency. Labor is, labor is more expensive in China today than it is in Nigeria. In fact, we have 87 million people who do not have jobs. Mm -hmm. So if goods that are manufactured in, in China can leave China and you pay the high shipment, including duty clearing, and it's cheaper than what you manufacture, something is wrong here. So you fix it. And look at the just, let me just give you an example. Just a papa, to bring our goods in a papa, costs more than it costs to bring the goods from Europe to here. Thank you very much. Thank Just you. transport. Thank you. Yes. Candidate of the APC. Yes, um, I think my rebuttal is simple. The question really is that the, air, the, the continental free trade area has been negotiated for years. It, the, the negotiation started even under the previous government. So the question of consultation or not consultation and when it ought to have taken place really could have taken place many years ago when they started these negotiations. Second point is that labor is not the only factor of production. It's not the only cost. So the mere fact that labor is cheaper in Nigeria than China doesn't mean that goods produced in Nigeria will be cheaper than China. So what is going on today, for example, is that if you import rice from China, it will still be cheaper because a lot of their rice is stored up there and is heavily subsidized as well, just as from America. Second point is that we still have issues around power. Power is a major cost. That's one of the reasons why we're investing so heavily in transmission and generation and trying our best to do with distribution. So there are many other costs. It's not just about labor. I mean, if you talk about labor, that's, a, that's, a, that's just one single cost. There are Thank so you. many other costs. Thank so you. dumping is a major issue. Thank, Thank you very much. Let me stay with you, candidate of the APC. Now, the Central Bank of Nigeria is very passionate about uh, 41 items that uh, have been excluded from the forex market. Uh, only recently, another item, fertilizer, was added. Is it a good, a, very, a good policy in your view? Well, let me say first of all that the Central Bank of Nigeria is independent in terms of its own activities, and I really cannot change or not change their policies. But let me say to you that, just take some of the examples. Toothpicks, for example, have been imported into Nigeria. Fertilizer, which we have now cracked with the, with the, with the, with the uh, collaboration we have with Morocco, we are now able to deliver fertilizer at half the cost. 
So you have fertilizer now at, at you know, some 6,000, 7,000. At some point, it was about 12, 13,000, even higher. So you can no longer do that. And rice is also another example. We were importing practically all of our rice. As I said, $5 million of rice every single day. Today, we are no longer doing so. We've encouraged local production by preventing a situation where anybody can simply go and buy rice. And, and simply go and you know, open a farm and bring in rice. So if you are going to protect local industry, if you are going to protect local, if you are going to protect local activity, then you need to do something like what, uh, you, you may need to do something such as what the CBN is doing. Final point on that is that when you have, where you have a situation such as we have today, these 41 items, it is not a ban on those items. All that the CBN is saying is you can't come to us for foreign exchange. You can go and source your foreign exchange wherever you want, but you can't come to the CBN for foreign exchange for these items where they believe, uh, which they believe can be produced locally. So that really is the point. Thank you very much. Candidate of the ANN. Now, Nigeria is perhaps the only oil producing country in the world today that imports petroleum products. Uh, and uh, this is because our refineries are not performing optimally. Our refineries. Now, our refineries are not performing optimally. And so we have to import, uh, uh, export crude and import refined products. What would you do as vice president or your government uh, if you get elected? Would you build new refineries or would you privatize the ones that we have now? Now, like I said the last time, is that we're going to heavily invest in a PPP kind of government, which is the pub a private public um, partnership. So we're grateful that at least right now we have one Nigeria that is trying to upgrade, um, it's trying to build refineries. I don't see why, as a country, if the systems are well developed and the processes are strengthened, why we should be importing, bringing in petroleum when we are the ones that have all that. What we should be looking at is building more refineries in the country, expanding on those, and asking the private sector to get involved also asking international co um, communities to collaborate with us on how to ensure that the petroleum, the petroleum um, sector is well strengthened. And also, w the infrastructure aspect of um, building the refineries, ensuring that the, um, the huge transparency um, cloud uh, um, IT, ICT system will be, will be encouraged so that all the processes and the systems will be transparent enough for everybody to see what's going on, for the, uh, for the uh, common man to know what is going on in the petroleum sector. Right now, a lot of things are not being transparent, and we don't know. But what we want to do differently is to ensure that more refineries are built, more PPP are, ensure, uh, are, um, are established, and also to ensure that other, the diversification, we should not depend at all on petroleum. We should diversify our economy in agriculture, in ensuring that we have more industry, and so on and so forth. Candidate of the ACPN, some experts have suggested that what is required is a concession of some critical uh, infrastructure or sectors of the economy. For instance, the refineries and even in the aviation sector. What will be the agenda of the ACPN when it comes to power as far as concessioning of critical infrastructure is concerned? Well, I have said this earlier, that one of the cardinal principles of the ACPN as contained in our manifesto is to bring reforms. And the reforms will be in, in the petroleum sector and other sectors where the government is, is, is the major stakeholders. You see, the, the, the attitude of Nigerians to public enterprises are nothing to write home about. We have four refineries, none of them is working. And they are due to human factors 
If you continue to do this thing, our people will leave our people to be, continue to be vulnerable. What we do is to hands off the interests of government in all the federal government businesses so that they can be handed over to, the, to, to investors. The, to, to investors. In that way, if you have your own business, you monitor it jealously to make sure that you are making profit. So you, you do it to make profit. When, if it is government business, in Nigeria, government business is not anybody's business. So in the reform that we are going to do in the critical sector of the Nigeria economy, all business interests of the government will, will be privatized and we encourage people, we encourage our people and investors. We are necessary even with funds, with funds and partnership to make sure that services are provided for our people at minimal cost. Thank you very much. Candidate of the YPP, what would be the major economic trust of your party, or if he gets elected, as far as the aviation sector is concerned? Well, we know that those days we used to have Nigerian Airways, which were very, very one of the largest um, uh, airlines in the world. And today, African countries like Egypt, Ethiopia, and others have taken that away from us. The major thing a typical Nigerian needs to get to look into is to see how we can rekindle patriotism into our hearts. Because all these things, we have them in abundance. All we have the manpower, we have the resources to fix those things. I think recently we had the news that we all overjoyed that there will be a kind of the bringing back or the awakening of the Nigerian airways, which we're all joyful about. But as time goes on, let it just, we don't know what happened to it. So to be candid, what Nigeria just need is patriotic leaders, leaders that have Nigeria at heart. This is just what I will say about the aviation sector. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Candidate of the PDP, uh, let me take you to the ICT sector. Uh, it is one of the fastest growing in the world today, and the power of ICT to transform the economy is not in doubt. What will your government do as far as the ICT sector is concerned? Well, you're talking about investment in education, in STEM, science, technology, engineering, mathematics education. That is the future. I've said it before that the more you invest in education, the better your economy. So we'll aggressively invest in education. I have done this even as a governor of a state, where I took a state from being number 28 to number one. Because we know the value of education. I was the first to buy and equip all our schools with ICT. I understand what that is all about. Go to HP, I bought the highest computer ever bought by a government in Africa, 30,000. So I know the value. I know what it is today. Just look at one simple thing. The economy of Nigeria is $420 billion. South Africa is 280, that's 700. Egypt, that is the number three, is 250, 950. When Apple market capitalization is 1 trillion. So you need to invest in that. And it's shown clearly in the world that in 2020, you have 25 million STEM jobs available in the world. We will take ICT serious. We will invest in it. That's why I said you can't continue doing subsidy when you need to invest money in the future. You're driving yesterday. If you continue to do what we're doing, you're kind of like investing in yesterday. Those who think about yesterday and today will miss tomorrow. We need to invest in tomorrow. And I will invest in ICT aggressively. That's what our government will do. And I'm sure that's what our TIC will do. Thank you very much. Thank you. Any reporters on any of the issues? Well, just to say that um, with respect to technology, we're not talking about what we will do. We're talking about what we are doing. And what we are doing is that we're investing very heavily in technology. At the moment, we've set up six technology hubs in the six geopolitical zones. Those technology hubs are being funded uh, mainly by the federal government. Some of them are part-funded. STEM education is critical, 
And we've, as you know, we've uh, done the curriculum, which is not just STEM, it includes, it's actually STEAM, it includes arts, science, technology, engineering, arts, and math, which is very crucial. And we're looking, and, and we've also invested, we've also invested heavily, even to here, in, even here in Abuja, in, in, in five uh, model classrooms for technology. We're looking at what to do for, for technology training and how to make technology training available for everyone. We, we set up a technology advisory group, Thank which brings in much, all sir. technology. Okay. Thank you very much. At this point in time, we'll go on a break, and when we return, we'll be talking a lot more about the economy and business environment in Nigeria. Stay with us. Ladies and gentlemen, we are coming back now. We are coming back. Please be seated. We are coming back now. Please be seated. We are coming back in 30 seconds, please. 30 seconds, please. 30 seconds. Counting down in 30 seconds. Chairs, please. Chairs, chairs, chairs. Move our chairs. Stand by now. Stand by. Stand by, please. Please be seated. Please be seated now. We need everyone to be seated now. It's 10 seconds. Welcome back. All right, let's turn to the candidate of the Alliance for New Nigeria. Uh, the Nigerian economy today is still burdened uh, by the problems of power supply. Okay. Now, specifically, if you are elected to government, how many megawatts of power do you think your government can generate per year? Right now. Right now, we are what we have 
Uh, right now we have the prepaid meter um, kind of, um, pre what we are having in government right now is prepaid and still Nigerians are not feeling the impact of what is what we have presently. We want to generate, aside from the four hydroelectric and gas and all those things that we have, we want to diversify the, uh, the power sector. We want to upgrade the megawatts to more than the present uh, numbers that we have. We want to ensure that we have maximum demand. Um, we, uh, we, we want to ensure that the prepaid meter and maximum demand meters for all government and ministries, department, agencies, understand what it means to uh, understand the essence of power in, gov um, in governance. So what we're, we're, we want, we are upgrading the present level of um, power supply that we expand. We use um, innovation to also bring about the new systems of power diversification that we're trying to do, aside from the present one that we have because we know that the megawatt is not enough for us. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Thank you. A candidate of the ACPN, um, the Ajakuta Steel Company has got over $10 billion in the last 30 years. Now, what is your plan for this very critical infrastructure? The issue of Ajakuta has been there for a very long time. <clears throat> And it has been fraught with corruption, serious corruption. And now a, 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 drain, a drain pipe to the nation's economy. Ajatuta could have been one of the major big industries that could have set the stay for the, for, the, for the progress and development of this country. Just last week, I think I read in one of the papers that the, the Senate has approved about one billion to be injected into Ajakuta Steel Company, Steel Rolling Company. Despite all the several billions that has been sucked into it up to now, the, gov the, the, the government is not benefiting anything from it. I think what we do, what our government in power will do, is to look into the issue of Ajakuta Steel Rolling Company critically, so as to be able to find a, a lasting solution to it. This is a major economic something for, for, for our nation. What we do is to, is to, is to advertise and to, 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 for people to do a competitive bidding so that we can pick the best company that has the capacity to turn the industry around so that still the steel only may can be brought back to life. Thank you very much, candidate of the YPP. The steel rolling mills in Nigeria are all, as it were, not working to capacity. And this is also a function of the fact that the Ajakuta Steel Company has been down for several years after so much has been spent. What do you think is the way forward? Well, <clears throat> the way forward to f fixing the steel industry in Nigeria is initially I could remember I read about the plan to fix it, but I just don't know so what's happening, why it's not being fixed. But we intend to invest and bring in investors because I know in, right now in Nigeria we have a lot of Chinese that are into business, but you know, into that very business, especially in my northern part of the country. But we still need investors, and we still need to partner with local um, uh, interested people to see how we can be also part of this business and how we can generate um, uh, funds to go into this sector. And the second thing, I'm very sure a lot, I heard somebody talking about why the steel company is not working, it's still a power issue. So I think we need to rekindle still um, uh, patriotism into the hearts of Nigeria to see how we can cripple the generator mafias. Because I'm very sure by defeating such, Nigeria will have power supply and most of our industry today will be at work. Thank you. Thank you very much, candidate of the PDP. Nigeria's ease of doing business 
ranking. He is currently at 146 out of 190 countries, and there's been an improvement in recent times, yet uh, this is not a very good ranking for our country and for our economy. What will you do to improve the ease of doing business if you get elected? Well, it first you have to look at where your competitors are. If I belong to the BRICS nations, where are they? If I belong to the MIND nations, where are they? If you look at all the rankings, they are just below 100 and you are 146. So it's not good for you to compete. And what are you going to do that? I keep saying that government needs to move out of business and do the right things. There's so many things you can do. Let me take issue of port, for example. Nigerian Post Authority, for years, looked at the expansion that is coming and everything, and decided not to invest. Instead, we're using money wrongly. Nigerian Post Authority is the only port in the world that has an office, even guest house, outside this country of operation. They have a guest house in London. And that is the problem. You're not investing money in the business. And the reason why they're not investing money in the business is that the source of their money, the source of their money is, is the, the, gov the waste that is in government continues to drive their process. So you need to get these things to be more efficient by allowing them to get their money from the capital market. If the money they are using to operate today is from the capital market, they will become more efficient because they have money, loans that they need to pay back, they need new managers, and banks will be after them. Thank you very much, thank you. Candidate of the APC. Can, can I rebut before I? Yes. Can I rebut? Please go ahead, one minute. I, I thought the candidate of the PDP will at least acknowledge that while under the PDP, we fell 64 places down on the World, on the world Bank Index. Under us, we've moved 24 spaces in 18 months, 24 places up in the ease of doing business. The second thing is, if you say investments haven't taken place in years, who has been in office these last 16 years? <laughs> isn't it just incredible, isn't it just incredible how it is possible to keep a straight face and talk about all that has gone wrong? 